Before puberty hit me with an absolute vengeance, I was this super skinny, pale faced little kid whose favorite album was Thin Lizzy's Live and Dangerous album, because it was pretty much the only album I owned at the time. And I fell in love with that album for so many reasons. A lot of the riffs were really accessible. There were some super tasty guitar solos on there. And, you know, the cover just made you want to pick up a guitar and become a rock star. So I sort of went on the hunt for more Thin Lizzy stuff. And the first studio album by them that I ever found was their Thunder and Lightning album featuring John Sykes on guitar, especially the song Cold Sweat. I always remember hearing that for the first time and just needing to know how to play that riff because it was so cool. There was so much swagger. It was so aggressive. There's pinch harmonics flying off everywhere and it. Uh, it just had this great, big, ballsy guitar tone. <laughs> You know, it's like the essence of rock distilled. So uh, the difference between that album sounding so heavy and the Live and Dangerous album, I figured, was this guy called John Sykes. So I tried to track down some more stuff that he had done, and I got White Snake's 1987 album. <laughs> And I still can't do those harmonics the way he does them there. Uh, one thing that I noticed about John's playing, a lot of the solos on the 87 album, a lot of the solos on the Blue Murder album that I late, later got, and uh, you know he's singing on that Blue Murder album as well, so it's like you can sing better than just about everyone, you can play guitar just about better than everyone, you write great songs, you're a good looking dude, like, man, I think I want to be you. So I developed this mega man crush on John Sykes, but I noticed he does this like repetitive pentatonic thing a lot. And I'd heard a bit of Gary Moore at the time. And to me, I was like, yeah, I reckon that's John being influenced by Gary Moore and probably Michael Schenker as well, who I was vaguely aware of at the time. I'd heard the song Rock Bottom anyway. Uh, and it's that rapid fire pentatonic lick. You know, if you're playing in the key of E, it... And he does it in the second half of the solo for Cold Sweat, where it moves up a tone to G sharp. The first little lick is something like this. This is how I play it. Ooh, that was a bit rough around the edges. Uh, but I loved that lick and I was like, okay, he does that heaps on that song. He does it on a bunch of White Snake songs. I gotta figure this out. And uh Around a similar time, I got the White Snake in the Still of the Night live DVD with Doug Aldrich playing on it. And he's another guy coming from that Schenker, Gary Moore, John Sykes kind of school. And I was watching how he was doing it. And I was, you know, he's got these kind of flat fingers and he's getting in there and really shredding. And I was like, all right, I definitely am not going to be able to do it with that because I'd always struggled with two note per string patterns. Uh, and my Bible for picking stuff and basically guitar in general is still Paul Gilbert's Intense Rock Volume 1. So I was like, maybe I can figure it out as a three note per string thing. And this is what I came up with. It doesn't really sound like the lick, but it's hyper aggressive. And uh, I reckon it sounds pretty cool. And it's very much like a kind of weird hybrid of Paul Gilbert, Doug Aldrich, John Sykes and Gary Moore, and just my general lousiness and sloppiness. <laughs> Something like that in there, and I love the way Doug did the John thing where he's doing the rapid fire licks, but then getting Ben's worked in there, so I was trying to work that in. Uh, I love the way someone like Gary Moore and John, they were just so aggressive with their playing, but then I also loved the way someone like Paul Gilbert would figure out cool ways to do licks that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more about this lick. All right, let's zoom in nice and close on this lick. We're gonna do it in the key of E, just because it's a little bit easier to handle than G sharp. We're using E minor pentatonic for John's version of the lick, like this. 
And the notes that we're going to be playing are the 14th fret on the G string, the 12th fret on the B string, and the 15th fret on the B string as well. So what you do is play 14 and then hammer on 12 to 15 and pull off back to 12. That's the first little part. And I do this with economy picking, just with one downstroke, uh, basically because I'm super lazy. So that's the first little part of the lick. The next time you play it, just double up on the hammer on here. So you do this. Pretty much what he's playing, you know, you might want to go and uh, consult some more accurate transcriptions than me, but that's the vibe of the lick. And the idea is to play it as aggressively as possible. <laughs> You can also chuck a wah on and plenty of delay if you're like me and you're super sloppy. So that's pretty much what he's playing and that's just a great lick to have in your arsenal. Very much in that category of like when one of your mates says, Oi, play the hardest thing or the coolest thing you know on guitar. Then you just go, oh yeah, this. And hopefully they go, whoa, dude, that's awesome. Anyway, this is how I figured out how to play it when I was a teenager. And I still rely on this lick a lot. I've used it in a lot of solos for different ragdoll songs. It's in the solo for a song called Tell Me. It's in the solo for a song called All I Want as well. So uh, start on the 12th fret with your middle finger. You're going to back that up with your pointer finger on the 11th of the B string. And we're going to reach up to the 15th on the B string. So the order we play the notes in is 12, 15, 12, 11. So you can see straight away this 11th fret is coming from the blue scale. So already I'm a little bit wrong how not to play it. And we're going to play the notes in this order, basically with hammer-ons and pull-offs. <laughs> That's a pretty good little legato exercise as well. All I added to that is just basically I tremolo pick this note and not focus too hard on how many times I play it, but basically just do that. It's kind of like a nervous twitch more than a precise lick, so I don't even play it the same way twice. You get this. And you can kind of warm up on the lick just by playing that kind of thing and like accelerate into it, which I think is pretty cool. And it basically lets you take it up another notch. At the time I sort of like basically bastardized this lick, I was listening to Paul Gilbert's uh, Intense Rock Volume 1. I say listening, I say listening and watching. So everything had to be three notes per string at the time. There's a really cool little pattern if you want to sequence it as like a pattern of six like this. Or just make it a nervous twitch. And the cool thing about the nervous twitch method is you can kind of make it your own. You know, it's not going to sound the same between any two players. And you could take this through an extended pentatonic or blues like this. <laughs> And again, the point is to play it as aggressively and with as much swagger as possible if you really want to cop John's vibe. So that is how I don't play the lick to Cold Sweat and Give Me All Your Love by Whitesnake and a whole bunch of other John Sykes solos. I really hope this inspires you to basically delve back into the blues scale and play some crazy Sykes, Schenker, Gary Moore inspired licks and uh, yeah, impress all those preschoolers with how adept you are at bastardizing cool guitar licks. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If there are other songs 
you want me to show you how not to play or licks you want to figure out like weird workarounds for, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, stay excellent. I will see you guys real soon.